On behalf of the League of Women Voters of North Reading, we welcome you to tonight's Candidates Forum. My name is Cynthia taft Bayrell, and I'm President of the League of Women Voters of North Reading. And the League of Women Voters of North Reading and all League members pride itself on their ability to host nonpartisan Candidates Forums as one of its community services. This is a way of fulfilling our mission, which is to, de to educate our community about the issues and to get out the vote. Hosting Candidates Night Forums is a way to have discussions about important issues in the community and how the candidates who are running for office would address and manage these issues. We also work, obviously, to get out the vote. The League is a nonpartisan political organization for women and men, which encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in government. One way we do this is by presenting candidates um, directly to you, and today it's the live audience, on cable, the voters in a fair and equal format. We hope that over the course of this program that you will learn more about each candidate and that they hope and what they hope to do for this district and the state. Um, to further support our nonpartisan stand, we have asked Peggy Cruz from the Andover League, she's the president of the Andover League of Women Voters, to serve as our moderator. And in a moment, Peggy will explain the format of tonight's question and answer period. Tonight's forum is a new venture for the North League uh, Women Voters. Historically, we have supported a local candidates night in February before local elections. So tonight's forum hosts two candidates for state level office, that of state representative. The League had also invited the candidates for state senate but both candidates were not able to be here on the same night, and our guidelines prohibit us from hosting a contested race without both candidates present. We were not able to bring you the candidates for state senate, but we are thrilled that both candidates for state representative, Mr. Ben Tafoya, and Representative Brad Jones have graciously agreed to participate. For filming purposes, tonight's forum is not open to the public, Questions will therefore not come from the audience, but the League has solicited questions from the local newspapers from the four local towns that are covered by this position, being North Reading, Reading, Middleton, and Linfield. I would like to take just a moment here to thank Karen Pearson from the North Reading League of Women Voters who has organized tonight's event, and to thank other League members who have helped, including Pat Swachenko, Sally Carroll, and members from the Middleton League who are actually helping us with timing. So I'd like to open, start now with Peggy um, giving you the outline of tonight's agenda. Okay, thank you. And uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, let's, we're going to start tonight, tonight's debate by having each candidate give a two-minute opening statement. Uh, there is a timer sitting in the front row who will help them with 30-second, um, 15-second, uh, and stop cards when it is time to stop. Um, We'll start with the opening statement uh, with Mr. Tafoya. My name is Ben Tafoya, and it's my pleasure to speak with you tonight. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for this going through the effort to arrange this debate. It is my honor to be here as the Democratic nominee for state representative to address the concerns of the residents of North Reading, Reading, Linfield, and Middleton. I'm running this year because I feel there are so many issues where a current representative has taken us down the wrong road. Local aid to our towns for our schools and other municipal services is down, and our property taxes are going way up. Our schools are charging fees for extracurricular activities, and educational quality is being compromised by fiscal uncertainty. We have a health care crisis in this state. Every day, more of our neighbors are losing their insurance coverage and facing financial ruin due to rising costs for primary care, preventive care and prescription drugs. The growing number of the uninsured costs us all in higher taxes, higher insurance rates, and the loss of creativity by people unwilling to start a new firm or change jobs for fear of losing their insurance benefits. I will work to put us on the right road. I will provide leadership to change state priorities to make sure we fully fund our commitment to public education. In Massachusetts, education is our greatest natural resource. But like any great resource, it requires investment to see its full potential. We must also invest in health care to provide access to preventive care and primary care in order to hold down escalating costs. We must use the bulk purchasing power of the state 
to lessen prescription drug costs. I bring a 20-year career in the private sector as a manager, largely in the technology field. This gives me a unique perspective on the issues facing the Commonwealth. I have stayed in Massachusetts in good times and bad, and felt the sting of disappointment as well as the joys of success, just right alongside my neighbors. I believe that this experience makes me very qualified to be your state representative. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy, and thanks to the League for sponsoring tonight's forum. Uh, it really is a pleasure to be back here in a room uh, behind the table where I served the citizens of North Reading for six years as a member of the Board of Selectmen. Um, over the years, I've been a tireless and dedicated advocate for the citizens I represent, individually and collectively in the communities of this district. And perhaps no greater demonstration of that commitment is the fact that in 10 years, I've not missed one consecutive roll call. Uh, in fact, the longest consecutive string of any member currently serving in the legislature. Each year I have the tremendous opportunity to interact with thousands of people in my district, whether it's through local meetings, events, through phone calls, through letters, through postcards, through petitions, uh, via the email, or just people who stop when you fill your tank up with gas at the local gas station. And never, wherever one of those citizens live, am I concerned that they're in my district or not in my district. If you're in Redding, you're in North Redding, you're in Linfield or Middleton, I don't care what your address is, if you have a problem, we're going to do our level best to help you out. Now this race isn't about being a Democrat or a Republican. It's about the future and who can best and most effectively advocate for the citizens of this district. And I'd like to say that based on my experience and my time in this office, I think that in my position as minority leader, I can absolutely best effectively advocate for the citizens of this district. This is an important election and voters have an important decision to make. I look forward to this opportunity tonight to talk to the voters about the issues, about the future, and the future representation of this district. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we begin the question and answer part of the evening. Uh, you will have two minutes for each question. You're not required to use the full two minutes. Uh, we have many questions, and so we're going to try, and we will touch on many different issues. So try to stay on the subject of the specific question, and hopefully we will get around to all the subjects of interest tonight. Um, we will start with the first question to Mr. Jones, to both of you, but Mr. Jones answers first. Uh, this one was submitted from the Reading, uh, Reading Advocate. Do you think the new development on Walker's Brook Drive in Reading is something the town needs more of? If so, how would you suggest getting a stronger business base for the town? Well, I think the first thing I would say is that the development of Walker's Brook Drive has been a tremendous success, a perfect demonstration of the interaction of the private sector and the public sector uh, of local government and state government, and I'm very proud to have played a role in getting the $1.8 million grant that allowed for the public improvements, the signage on Route 12895 so that people would know where it's at, and money to help with the insurance payment for the BRAC uh, in order to make that development happen. Uh, that is going to be home to uh, thousands of employees when it's all done, uh, and is a tremendous asset for the town of Reading. But obviously, Reading has a very small commercial base, and we need to do more. The next big step is to work on the downtown improvement program. Uh, we've been very successful getting from the 25% design hearing, getting trying to get to 75% design hearing uh, moving forward. One of the other issues I think long term is to provide the adequate resources in terms of water. Uh, Reading is trying to become part of the MWRA, uh, and that will allow for additional growth opportunities. Unfortunately, there are not tremendous growth opportunities uh, land-wise in the town of Reading uh, for commercial. So we're going to have to look again at other opportunities at Main Street. Uh, I think the downtown improvement program is an important piece. Uh, the Walkers Brook Drive uh, has been a, a tremendous asset to the town of Reading in terms of avoiding the cost of capital the landfill, uh, the payments from the development, uh, the payments in terms of taxes. Uh, hopefully, ideally, someday, uh, it was originally proposed that maybe there would be a hotel there and that would be an ongoing generation of hotel uh, tax uh, for the local portion. Um, but there are a number of opportunities uh, in Reading, uh, and I think that uh, my record will demonstrate that when businesses in Reading have come forward with an issue uh, we've been able to use the resources in my office uh, to help them, whether it's cut through bureaucracy, uh, get appro approval faster than they might otherwise have gotten it. Uh, and I think, though, that clearly the Walkersburg Drive development in town of Reading uh, is, is a success that is going to be very, very hard to replicate, uh, and one, though, that will provide uh, ongoing, sustained revenues for the town of Reading to meet its needs, whether it's educational or public safety, roads, and infrastructure. Thank you. Mr. DeCoy. Thank you, Peggy. Uh, I too think that the uh, development on Walkersbrook Drive is an important addition to the tax base uh, for Reading. As a taxpayer in the town, I certainly appreciate the help uh, that we're going to be getting from the businesses that have located there. 
Uh, it will help us deal with the rising property taxes that are a major concern that we have uh, in the town. Uh, but we must be careful as we do economic development of this type to make sure that we don't uh, go too far and hurt the Main Street businesses that uh, have contributed so much to the development of our towns. Uh, we've lost a, a local hardware store, for instance, uh, in, in recent times uh, as the uh, superstores uh, have encroached on the business space. And we need to make sure that that kind of development uh, you know, doesn't happen to the rest of our downtown communities. Uh, we need to make sure that we patronize our Main Street businesses uh, and encourage their development uh, and work uh, with our town officials to bring in the right kind uh, of mix of activities in our downtown areas uh, to make sure that they remain vibrant uh, and are attractive uh, for uh, our local residents. Uh, in order to do a proper job with economic development, we need to invest in those areas that have contributed so much to Massachusetts growth uh, in the last 20 years. You know, Massachusetts is hailed across the country uh, as a uh, beacon in leadership in areas related to technology and, and innovation. Uh, and that's one of the, the areas that I think is critical uh, in the next few years, is we need to have the state do more uh, to invest in areas of technology growth that we want to see to generate the right kind of jobs uh, for our neighbors in the future. Uh, that starts with the proper kind of investment in higher education, uh, and it moves on to the proper kind of investment in new technologies uh, through research uh, on issues like, such as stem cell research uh, or alternative energy sources, uh, areas, again, that will generate the good new jobs for us for the future. Thank you. Uh, for this next question, we'll have Mr. Tafoya answer first. This was submitted from the Village Reporter in Middleton. With local libraries proposing expansions in many communities, would you ever be in favor of enhanced regional library service or combining school and public library offerings to help control costs in our communities? I think a question like that related to cost savings for institutions like libraries and schools, you know, is something that the local town should have the option uh, of dealing with. Uh, and uh, that, you know, the libraries obviously play a critical role in contributing to the educational community uh, in each of our towns. And, you know, we have uh, in our four towns of North Reading, Reading, Linfield, and Middleton some great library resources. Uh, the folks in Middleton uh, on Tuesday will be able to vote on the uh, uh, Community uh, Preservation Act, uh, which will help them uh, raise money for their renovation uh, of the Middleton Library, uh, which I think would be a, a terrific addition for the community. Uh, the libraries in Reading and, and Linfield and North Reading are also very vibrant. Uh, so, it, you know, we can let the towns determine the best way to manage the, the resources that they have, uh, you know, in this area. Uh, I do think that regional sharing uh, of resources is important uh, in, in today's world, uh, but so much is being done electronically uh, that people can actually go to their library and reach out around the world for information as they're trying to do research. Uh, you know, we've come a long way. Actually, in 1979, uh, many, many years ago, uh, as a young college graduate, I was a delegate to the White House Conference on Library and Information Services. Uh, and I would have totally forgotten about everything that I had heard then, except for the fact that people in those days, even that long ago, were predicting the kinds of, of uh, improvements in uh, information technology that we benefit from today, where we can sit at our library or a cafe or our home uh, to look up information that's important uh, to our lives, for school, for work, uh, for our neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, with, you know, with that kind of capability of uh, continuing, the libraries are a great resource uh, for our public. Thank you. Mr. Jones? Uh, absolutely. I think one of the great things about our, our libraries is, is their ability to resource share. Uh, in times of limited resources uh, and in times of technology, it's great that we've been able to network them through the North Boston Library Exchange various technology consortiums. Uh, it's interesting, the question comes from the Village Reporter. Uh, as you know, the Flint Library, Flint Memorial Library uh, in the town of Middleton uh, recently got a library construction renovation grant, uh, and we were very proud of the role we played in that. Normally, they would have had, their lo had to have their local financing in place in a very short time frame. We were able to get them a one-year extension so that they would have time to go out, put together their plan, and sell it to the community, uh, and have the voters embrace uh, the additional dollars it took for the, for the town to come up with their local share. Uh, and if successful, they can have a wonderful facility that will, in fact, be a regional 